Hi, this is Manos Berlakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute, presenting case 20 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of retrograde CTO PCI done using hemodynamic support. The patient presented with angina and was found to have an osteal RCA CTO with an occluded saphenous vein graft to the posterior descending artery. He also had ischemic cardiomyopathy with an ejection fraction of 33% and had recently undergone a non ST elevation myocardial infarction. Diagnostic angiography showed an osteal occlusion of the right coronary artery. The left main was patent with competitive flow in the distal vessel of the LAD through the lima, and the posterior descending artery, distal and mid right coronary artery were feeling retrograde via septal collaterals. Therefore, we have an osteal right coronary CTO that was difficult to engage during diagnostic angiography. The length was approximately 40 millimeters. There was a bifurcation of the distal cap and the collaterals were from the LAD to the PDA septal collaterals that were amenable to retrograde. So given the osteal occlusion, the plan was for an, a primary retrograde approach with potentially undergrade dissection reentry if the retrograde failed. This is a workhorse Scion Blue Wire that is advanced into a septal branch and then followed by a Corsair catheter. We performed surfing with uh, a Sion uh, wire and were then able to advance into the posterior descending artery as confirmed by angiography. However, the wire then took a different course instead of going into the distal right coronary artery. It was advancing in an entirely different location and this actually is the occluded saphenous vein graft to the posterior descending artery that might actually have been the culprit for the recent non ST elevation myocardial infarction. So this is a very common challenge when trying to wire through vessels with uh, bypass stumps that the wire may actually follow the course of the bypass instead of going in the native coronary artery. We were able to redirect the wire from the saphenous vein graft back into the distal right coronary artery and then were able to advance it all the way proximal RCA and it appeared that the occlusion was fairly short between the ostium of the right coronary and the distal cap. We then attempted to engage with the guide catheter and because the impeller was placed from one femoral axis we, ha we used the radial approach. However, we had a very difficult time engaging using several guides including the AL1, JR4, a CHAMP and the DRC. So after several attempts, we still have this challenge where we cannot wire retrograde. There is a side branch that is followed by the wire and we have a hard time engaging the right coronary with the guide catheter. The patient was very hemodynamically stable. So we decided to remove the impeller and then engage using femoral approach. And we're actually able to engage with an ambulance guide the guy, upon engagement and upon a test, actually we had a dissection that was coursing down into the mid right coronary artery, which actually facilitated advancing a knuckled guide wire in the dissection plane created by the contrast close to the retrograde microcatheter. We tried several guide wires trying to cross retrograde and we were finally able with a Gaia second wire to cross from the distal vessel all the way in the proximal true lumen and into the undergrade guide catheter. We performed intravascular ultrasound to determine the location of the reentry and also the size of the vessel for um, choosing the size of our stents. It appears that we have a vessel that is one, two, three, three and a half. And uh, the vessel is uh, continued all the way to the ostium. The vessel gets even bigger, one, two, three, four millimeters. And we of course have extensive dissections created by both the retrograde wire as well as the undergrade contrast injection. We perform predilation with um, two oh millimeter balloons, then deployed three oh millimeter stents in the proximal as well as the mid right coronary artery and then performing intravascular ultrasound and there was dissection distally. The distal part of the stand appeared to be under expanded. Therefore, 
we proceeded with additional post dilation, the stellin is still under expanded. So performed um, multiple post dilations with a 3 mm NC balloon, performed NC um, inflation with an ostial flash to optimize the ostium and facil facilitate re engagement, and then placed another regluting stand distally to 5 by 38 post dilated by 3 0 and now intravascular ultrasound. It's a little better. There's still a deformation in the middle part of the vessel. Also, the areas are okay, so there's still some under expansion. We also have very nice coverage of the ostium. We post dilated more the vessel, and then we got a, a nice final result with the restoration of undergrade flow in the right coronary artery. Fluoroscopy time was 63 minutes. The radiation dose was 1.6 gray, which is low because we're using one of the newer Philips Clarity machines, and 350 ml of contrast. So this case provides several lessons. The first is that in cases with um, low ejection fraction, especially when the retrograde approach is used, or when we're doing PCI from the last remaining vessel, doing hemodynamic support can help optimize the patient and prevent any hemodynamic uh, compromise. Also, saphenous vein grafts can make it difficult to wire because the wire may preferentially enter into the grafts instead of going into the more proximal vessel. This is an example of how the femoral approach facilitates engagement of the coronary arteries who had significant difficulty engaging the right coronary from the radial approach. However, after switching to femoral, we were able to easily engage. And actually, we caused a guide dissection, which, although it appeared like a complication, in reality, it was a blessing in disguise, since it facilitated subintimal ad advancement of a guide wire and then performance of the reverse card with wire advancement on the retrograde direction into the undergrade guide catheter. And finally, the case also shows the importance of intravascular imaging and intravascular ultrasound for determining the expansion of the stents detecting standard expansion and allowing stand optimization, which can then facilitate and improve the long-term patency. Thank you.